Hello, this paper was part of my doctoral research with Dr. Michael Ramish from the Center for Natural Material Innovation at the University of Cambridge and co collaboration with uh, Dr. Will Hawkins uh, from the Department of Engineering at the University of Bath. The paper is about thin tile vaulting and its possible application in today's construction, focusing on grassroots buildings and bottom-up construction methods uh, other than down, uh, top-down strategies. Thin tile vaulting traditionally uses terracotta tiles and plaster of Paris to achieve minimum formwork construction. While plaster of Paris is abundant in many countries, terracotta tiles are not. The paper investigates recycling concrete in the context of post-war for low carbon building in Syria. Syria has been undergoing a devastating war that left many buildings in, in ruins. It is estimated that rubble in the most affected five areas in Syria sums to over 45 million tons. So initiatives of small scale recycling units is already taking place with locally fabricated presses for making cement blocks in Syria. They are usually family based and they are dispersed between cities. The one in the center here. While accessible and widespread, introducing recycled thin tiles or introducing these machines to make recycled thin tiles fabrication within this already established supply chain can have an impact on their use and applications in construction. But what are the existing roof systems in Syria? They are predominantly concrete based. Now the Syrian building codes covers only reinforced concrete floors systems, which includes flat, flat, hollowed and ripped slab. However, there is also another type of slabs that we usually don't talk, to, don't talk about, which exist in informal construction in Syria. Those slabs also offer alternatives that sometimes can be faster and can use less materials. And so we also wanted to understand them and engage with them. And we mapped two reoccurring informal roof systems in Syria. The first is uh, cement blocks uh, placed directly on I or T section steel beams. The second is, um, is by covering a grid of small section steel beams with corrugated metal sheets and casting a 50 millimeter concrete layer on the top of all that. Uh, the second one is usually used for final roofs. Our proposed vault blends the flatness of a cross vault and the speed of construction of a sail fault geometry. After building the edge arches with one to nine rise to span ratio, builders can fill in the vaults in a spiral fashion without the need to cut the tiles. The proposed design of thin tile vault maximizes the, Im the involvement of low skilled labor. This limitation incorporated design parameters that results in easy to build steps developed through observing vernacular construction of thin tile vaulting in Spain and in collaboration with master vault builders. The proposed geometry was verified and developed further using graphic statics and adhering to the Syrian building code. An example of a typically large room area of 4.2 by 3.3 meter is adopted. The vault were calculated for symmetrical and asymmetrical loads, resulting in edge arches that ranges from five to three tiles and the whip of two layers of tiles only. We verified this proposal through the making of gravel tiles. After some tests, the final mix with acceptable consistency had a cement ratio of seven to eight percent. The maximum diameters of the aggregate was eight millimeters. The tiles were manually made, air dried and transported to the lab. The vaults for the test were 1.4 long and 1.1 meter wide. Like, the, like in the design of the edge arches, we built them over plywood formwork, followed by forming the whip by placing the tiles with plaster in a spiral fashion and without formwork. Following the worst case asymmetrical point load scenario for the arches, the shell were tested under a line load at the quarter of the large span. The corners were supported with steel brackets fixed rigidly to a strong floor. The protected uh, line load at Ferial was deduced by using graphic statics too, resembling a total failure of load of 2.3 kN. Also, 3D scanning was used to compare the as-built geometry with a designed one. The scan shows that Vault 2 is a closer to a flat arch geometry than Vault 1. In the testing, both vaults showed a cracking pattern that is close to a four-hinge collapse mechanism of an arch. Vault 1 showed a more complex crack patterns than Vault 2. 
in addition to the four hinges um, cracks, another central crack happened perpendicular to the nine load. This corresponds with the doubly curved nature of volt one uh, in, on the short span direction, which made it more prone to longitudinal cracking. After passing the Syrian building codes, we wanted to make a cost and embodied carbon comparison between the vaulted system and the slabs available in Syria, the one that we studied at the beginning of our research. So compared to the equivalent flat slab in Syria, the pre proposed thin shell system over an average cement reduction of 65%. Here we're talking about formal solid concrete slabs. And it's also 20% less in cost than any informal slab, which are usually also uh, cheaper than formal slabs. So what's also can be not, what can be also noted that the vaults maximizes the cost of labor and minimizes the cost of materials. So more money would go to people and less to machines. The method of designing and calculating the structure using graphic statics and the edge arches as a datum is highly conservative. This is not unexpected since it's a lower bound approach using a conservative design approach aligns with typical construction practice in Syria, where many off structures are produced informally and sometimes without any direct interaction with engineers. Therefore, we think that this approach advocates a possible improvement to be made on material efficiencies, even, even within the context of self-built housing. Thank you.